an intense battle there between Ashfield and Bayswater. Hello again, thanks for your company and welcome to Australia's best online football show. We're dedicating this episode to the Cup Final for 2013. In a moment, we'll bring you the highlights between Ashfield and Bayswater, but before the big clash, we thought we'd ask people around the ground on who they thought would be crowned Cup winners for 2013. Jerry Mayo, President of Bayswater City, who's going to win the big clash between Bayswater and Ashfield? Gee, that's going to be a hard one, but uh, hopefully it's us. 2-1 for Ashfield. I think Bayswater, odds on favourites, probably going to win 3-0. Our boys are pumped, they're ready. We're going to go for it 2-1 to Ashfield. I'm at tip is Bayswater 2-1. 2-0 Ashfield. Bayswater, of course. Ashfield 2-1 in the last minute. As much as I'd like to see the underdog win, I think Bayswater's just got too much strength. I can't look past Bayswater today, too much class there. We're looking for a bit of a turnover here by Ashfield, 3-2. 4-0 Look, I'd like to think Ashfield will get up, but I think Bayswater's just got the cattle that will just get them over the line, 2-0. Yeah, Ashfield can cause an upset here, I think. I'm not going to go for an upset. I've got my mate Jerry here. I reckon he's going to get up 2-1 in a tight one. The Cup Finals are always tight affairs, and not always the best team on paper wins. And I think there could be an upset on the, on the cast today. Ashfield. I think it might be close, but if Bayswater and their better players come to the party, it could be difficult. Yeah, some very interesting tips there indeed. Well, Leaders Stadium was the host venue and it was a very big day for Florida Athena as Football Operations Manager Tim Cantor explains. It's a fantastic opportunity for us to, as uh, Florida Athena Football Club to so showcase our facilities here. The club has put a lot of work into uh, getting the facility into ship shape, especially uh, looking forward into the uh, uh, NPL next year. It's been a fantastic turnout and I hope everyone enjoys it. It's been great for us. You know, we're talking crowds today of what they used to be in the late 70s, early 80s. I can tell you it's brought a few tears to a few of the old boys around here, that's for sure. Now, the champagne breakfast kicked off the formalities today. Matt Carruthers and Chris Coyne faced off. Former Glory coach Gary Morocchi and current coach Alistair Edwards were there. Coach of the year Paul Price reflected on his FA Cup win and new Glory signing Lubo Milicevic also added another dimension. So, a good start to the day. It's just fantastic to see all the personalities coming out and enjoying the day. Are you well stocked, Tim, to quench the thirst of the fans today? Oh, yeah, I think so. We've uh, just bought another big truckload of Cool Ridge water for the boys and the girls. Uh, we're making sure we're looking after everybody. Um, and for those that want, to, uh, want a little bit, uh, bit more of a kick than the Cool Ridge water, we've got some ales for them to have a drink as well. So it's been a fantastic day. I uh, hope they continue. It really is a credit to Football West for the, for, for the organisation of this uh, great day. A quick tip. Who's going to win? Head says Bayswater, Heart says Ashfield. Well, all the football action kicked off with the Under-18s Cup Final between Wanneroo and Gosnells. That was followed by the Reserves Cup Final between Perth and Bayswater. Let's take a look at the highlights.
Yes, yeah, some brilliant goals there indeed. Well done to Wanneroo. And what about that fight back by Perth SC? Well done to those boys for making amends on last year's Cup final loss to Coburn. And well done again to Perth coach Taki Nicolaides. Well, time now to take a look at the main feature between Ashfield and Bayswater. Both clubs looking at carving out their own history. A quarter of a century had passed since Bayswater last played in the Cup final. For Ashfield, this was their tilt at any major silverware in club history and were keen to make the most of it. Bayswater and White had the bulk of the attack in the first few minutes. Steve Burton was in the thick of it early on when he met a ball from the left and collided with Ashfield keeper John Perkins. Bayswater's and the best chance of the game came soon after. Some neat passing between Gustavo Marolanda and Burton created a path for the Colombian to find space. He steadied, but fired wide. Ashfield started to come into their own. They almost made some inroads with this free kick, but Devon Spence had it covered. Matt Wardle then sent the ball in from a short corner, which bowled through City's defence. The clearance not the best, allowing Ashfield to strike, but Spence did well to guard his net. Bayswater pressed again through another good passage of play which found Burton free. The 2011 Player of the Year looked up and threaded the ball to Marulunda who cleverly lost his man and snapped at goal, but straight into the hands of Perkins. Ashfield's best move of the match came through some brilliant vision by Ruben Tristal. Darrell Warren met the ball after bursting in on the left, but his touch let him down and was forced to rush what should have been a clear shot on goal. Bayswater's class and experience began to shine. Todd Howarth picked out Marulunda, who weaved, faked and jived, but fired over the bar. Nil-nil at the end of the first half. In the second 45, Ashfield came close to turning their fairy tale into reality. A corner ball into the box failed to be cleared. Tristal picked up the pieces, but shot the ball over the bar. At the other end of the pitch, the telepathy between Burton and Marulunda was sublime. The Colombian again was sent on his way to threaten the Ashfield goal, but couldn't make it count. Minutes later, Burton was at it again, running down the line before setting up Paul McCarthy, who fired only for Perkins to parry the ball away. But Bayswater could sniff blood. In the 83rd minute, a ball off a throw-in fell to Burton's feet, who turned his man with an exquisite deft touch to pass the ball into the net sending his teammates and the Bayswater Ultra fans into a frenzy. A top-class effort by Burton. He knew what he was doing from the moment he latched onto the ball, outsmarting his defender, Perkins caught in no man's land. The fairy tale for Ashfield looked over. Tom Kennedy tried to pull one back for the Red and Blacks. And again, minutes later, the ball went everywhere but the back of the net. At the other end of the park, Marulanda tried to make good of another chance, which again went begging. And then a last gasp attack by Jamie Burns almost brought the house down. At the final whistle, joy for City, despair for Ashfield. They may have lost the game, but won the hearts of fans around the ground. Ashfield's Nick Davies picking up the Stan Lazaridis Man of the Match award. But it was Bayswater's day. The Knight Series winners now crowned Courage Cup winners for 2013. We know we've got a tough couple of weeks coming up. We know, you know, Armadale and Sereno are going to be tough first and foremost. And then we've just got to see where the top four, or top five, sorry, takes us. But, you know, we've got a great group here. They deserve this for the hard work. And for the people behind the back room staff and all the rest of it, you know, there's a lot of hard work that came together in the game. So we'll enjoy it. Myself and Maddie and the rest of the coaching staff, uh, we can't be proud of the way the boys applied themselves. Uh, the, the way the boys um, went out there and really really worked hard for 90 minutes. So a little bit of disappointment for them, but um, yeah, proud and happy with the way they played. So no complaints from, from, that, from that aspect. We all battled well. I don't, I don't think I was any better than any one of the, uh, the other guys on our team today. I thought we all played really well, had good spells when we were on top, you know. Battled hard, but yeah, obviously I guess the award's nice, but swap it for a win any day. While City celebrated their cup victory, their lead on the table was gone. Sterling romped home to beat Balcata 4-2 in a catch-up game at the weekend, which sent the Lions to the top of the tree by a point. And full league action returned this weekend. Round 21 will see leaders Sterling battle against Inglewood. More about that in a moment. Floriot hosts Sorrento in another do-or-die battle for a finals berth. Bayswater take on Armadale. Balcata clash against the NTC. Coburn host a spirited Bunbury and Joondalup entertain Perth. 
highlights and results of the All Flags Premier League on Football 360 next week. Yes, and league action returns this weekend. One of the big clashes, Sterling against Inglewood. And I'm joined now by United coach Graham Normanton. Graham, a big weekend this week for you and your boys. Really, a must win if you've got, if you've got any chance to make it in the top five. Oh, we've had the last four weeks where we should have won, but but uh, yeah, we haven't managed to capitalise on Florida's slip-ups and they haven't managed to capitalise on ours. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a dogfight, hasn't it? But uh, for the, all the wrong reasons, really. If you lose this weekend, do you kiss your finals chances goodbye? If Florida win, yeah. We get a few players back this week and hopefully we can, uh, we can prove that we should have been in the top five all season. Inglewood, you must be happy, has been included in the 2014 NPL League for next year, among some other clubs. A, a few, you could say, surprises. Subiaco also in the mix, but happy that uh, Inglewood is uh, in the mix for next year. Oh, yeah, and I think we expect it to be. I mean, you know, we've, we've probably got some of the best facilities around, and um, I don't think, and I might be out, I'm speaking out of the turn here, that Inglewood have ever been out the top flight in their history. I think we put um, a good presentation together for Football West. And just lastly, Will Graham Norton be at the helm of Inglewood next year? Some rumours flying around that you could perhaps uh, move to another club. Can you dispel the rumours right here, right now on Football 360 Normo? Mate, I'm here at Inglewood. It's, um, you know, I haven't spoken to anybody else. Nobody's spoken to me. There may be some rumours around, but you know, I've only heard them today. And you know, uh, somebody rang me and, I, and suggested that I might be somewhere else. And I've never had any talks with anybody, so I'm at Inglewood and I'll stay here until they don't want me. Simple as that. And that wraps up another busy episode of Football 360 for this week. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for your company. We're only weeks away now from the finals campaign. We hope to see you next week. Until then, it's bye for now.